Okay, I'm clicking a few buttons here. Wait for people to come in if you want to hear about it. It's 9.30 in the a.m. here on the West Coast, so most people probably haven't seen Picard yet. So this will be spoilery. One might want to watch this later. I'll make sure to uh, make that clear as people come in, if they come in. Uh, today is January 23rd. It is my birthday, so happy birthday to me, and uh, was Star Trek Picard a birthday present? I'll let you decide, but the answer is no. Let me just... Uh, All right. All right. All right, we're on. So, Star Trek Picard. The worst title for a Star Trek show in the history of the franchise. And not to give too much of my first thoughts away, but the title is itself misleading because Captain Picard ain't in this show. I don't know who that guy is. I don't know who uh, Patrick Stewart was playing, but it sure as hell wasn't Captain Picard or any version of Captain Picard that one could imagine. Um, let's see. <sighs> How do I jump into this? I'm just going to say my thoughts, and this will probably be fairly brief. And I'll, j I'll leave you with my thoughts for later. There's nobody in the room right now, so I'm just going to get it all out there. And I'm going to get my phone because I took some notes. Um, why don't I preface it this way? Over the last decade, we've seen new people that hadn't done Star Trek before sort of reboot it, starting with the, obviously, the reboot films. And they've taken mostly the Captain's log, pre- uh, pre next generation, the sort of um, Captain, hold on, how, how we have do you a get message incoming from Deep Space K7? Okay, stand by. Where's the options? They've taken mostly the um, the original series Aegis, era we have a freighter coming into dock and we've uh, and made it a alternate universe or a new setting so like the the reboot films and discovery they take pre-existing kind of star trekish uh, original series era stuff and set it in an alternate universe or a reimagining and do it that way so that they can have a blank canvas to work with which is the the right way to do it because <laughs> as we can see um doing it any other way is uh problems how do i scan this oh yeah scan okay um this is the first time that these new hands have done something with pre-established Star Trek. Stuff that we already know, things that are pre-established in the main Star Trek universe. And they're terrible at it. 
they don't know what this they don't know what Star Trek is they don't know what or rather I, I shouldn't say they don't know Star Trek is Star Trek Nick Meyer very accurately described it as the Catholic mass where all over the world the mass is different but the music is the same so these new hands have used the music and done their own little interpretation with it they go to the music that was written by the TNG writers and cast and it's abysmal Star Trek Picard is abysmal. It is horrible. It is it is boring. It is doesn't at all. I I had thought to myself, um, this is uh, if if Captain Picard wasn't in this show, nobody w could possibly be enticed to watch this. But he's not in the show. Patrick Stewart has utterly forgotten how to play this character. And 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 why wouldn't he? It was 20 years ago was the last time, or somewhere around there. Yeah, almost like 20 years ago was the last time he played it. Uh, he has utterly forgotten how to play this character. It he doesn't bear the slightest resemblance to the character that we know. His internal dilemma is ridiculous. Now we've got... Uh, now, now some... Uh, and spoilers, 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 spoilers. By the way, um, some there was there was some attack on Mars, some terrorist attack by people who were cybernetically uh, augmented, and now everybody hates cybernetically augmented people, and they call them synthetics. And there's all there the, that one incident caused this immediate prejudice among humans in this time period. Why? There's no way in the world that people, if they, if these people knew anything about what the next generation era humans were like, that, no, that's something that we might experience now. There, there, there's, there's nothing. We don't act like this in the 21st century. You can make us. You can make the people in the future act like this, like we do now in a reimagining or a reboot or something that isn't what you've already established as Star Trek, but you can't do it. At, so you're telling me that after the next generation, then everybody starts acting like we do now again? Bullshit. Um, Steven Erickson said, famously, my favorite author, he said that he was talking about the, uh, the reboot films and he, maybe even Discovery, but he said that Star Trek should... Star Trek should give us a contrast to the cynical, dour nature of the present, not be a reflection of it. And you can do a reflection of it and, and talk about it in an alternate universe and that kind of thing. You can't take a, a world in which humanity has settled its differences and is now going out in peaceful exploration... And, and make them act like we do right now. I just don't understand why that was their impulse. If you're not gonna, if you're if you're not gonna make this, the next generation, um, culture of humanity, don't do it. I'm getting some comments here. My brother, happy birthday, brother. And they covered the same scenes. What are what, and they covered the same scenes. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. So it's okay when other shows do bad things. Well, I don't think it's necessarily do, doing commenting on modern stuff and and having being making humanity a little bit more accessible in an alternate universe. Yes, establishing your own thing is fine. Uh, this is very different. Mel says I didn't even know Picard aired yet. I don't want to pay for CBS access. Yeah, please don't. Um, but yes, it came out today. Um, but it's okay here. Get your standards back. Wait, why can you do that in the other ones? Why are bad things okay in the other ones? Because they're not bad in and of themselves. It's bad to take something pre-existing that had a completely different, um, a completely different aesthetic and a completely different atmosphere and then change it all up to be like, like it is right now. That means that you'd... Happy birthday! Thank you, Mel, for the five dollars. Um, I... Dan, I'll talk to you about this later. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about this later. I don't care. Uh, so, so the, here comes the major, major, major spoilers, okay? So there was a terrorist attack because all Star Trek stuff needs a terrorist attack now. Um, 
Uh, so and also there was a supernova. There was a Romulan supernova, and I guess that's a I guess that's a callback to the the Abrams era thing. But it because ha- I guess it happened in this time period. But this is the this is the universe where it didn't destroy Romulus. That so there was just a big humanitarian problem, and there's a line right at the beginning where this lady's talking to Picard in this stupid TV interview. Which again, why is everybody acting like it's now? And where, where these differences hadn't been settled and these attitudes weren't different. And and the interview person says to Picard, Oh, you were in favor of helping our greatest enemy. No, we don't consider other people to be like that. Even the Dominion was like, shit, I, it's, it just sucks that we have to be a war to be in wartime right now because this is a this isn't a ship of war this is a ship of peace everybody in the everybody in the whole federation would have immediately leaped to go help the romulans they don't look at it like that so so there was this stupid romulan so picard was the only person in all of starfleet that wanted to help the romulans and this oh the, uh oh div- oh this is the other thing that um you wanted to divert precious resources away from us to go help our greatest enemy. We have unlimited resources in the 21st after the 21st century in the in the TNG era. We have unlimited resources. We have replicators. We have spaceships that can go anywhere. It's not hard to get to Romulus. Of course, we would have helped them. There would have, and of course, maybe there might have been some people that felt that way, like in Star Trek VI, when there were a few bad apples that didn't want to help the Klingons. But we didn't have that kind of relationship with the Romulans we, we, we why the Rom uh it's so incredibly stupid contrived uh so Picard was the only one who wanted to help them and during the course of helping them somebody a bunch of people launched a terrorist attack on Mars in protest of us helping the Romulans I guess and they were cyborgs and so now everybody hates cyborgs oh and th- and ca- that we immediately came up with a racial slur called synthetics or synths which sound both sound incredibly stupid and uh now synthetics are banned yeah, right. We've already been over this. We've already covered this ground. No, you can't ban a race of people in the Federation. What are you talking about? And so you're tr- I-, I get that they're trying to comment uh, uh um so that's the overstory. The internal story is that Picard meets a woman named What's her name? Dodge? I think it's Dodge. And she's... uh, You go through this deeply, deeply, deeply boring series of events where Picard is just walking around, talking to people, and trying to get to the bottom of who this person is. Scan for life, okay. And... You come to find out, yada, 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 Data painted a picture called Daughter way back in the day. And it's Data's daughter, but it's not really Data's daughter. It's just Bruce Maddox, which the fact that he comes up in this is the only interesting thing to me so far. If he's in the show, that'd be kind of cool. But um, Bruce Maddox, I guess, used one of Data's positronic molecules to create a whole new artificial person but then they always have to be twins so the person that picard met was one of a set of twins that are data type androids that were created by bruce maddox in a lab but then synthetics were banned so he got all depressed and left even though he made two androids uh and so the data twin one number one dies but the other one is a scientist somewhere helping the romulans and she's in danger because people are after her trying to kill her there's a murder in the first five minutes of this star trek show uh and so that's the that's the plot right there that's all that happens in this hour-long pilot jesus christ So, uh, God, I don't even know what else to say. That uh, Patrick Stewart has utterly forgotten how to play 
Picard, I thought he was starting to lose sight of how to play that character when he did Nemesis. I thought he was starting to sound a little bit like this, and it's not Captain Picard, it's just Patrick Stewart. It's just Patrick Stewart. You watch any Patrick Stewart interview, that's what he's playing. It, there's nothing about that character that bears any resemblance to Picard. Sounds like fan fiction. Uh, yeah, it really does sound like a bad fan fiction. Like, as of somebody like, what if this thing happened after the next generation? And there was a lot of stuff that's, that was fan fiction-y in Discovery, like Michael Burnham being the secret. Oh, and I was gonna say, when they said, oh, it's Data's daughter, kind of. Stop making up secret relatives. Stop it, stop it, stop it. It's, it's, it's cancer for Star Trek. No, Spock doesn't have a half-brother that was supposed to be Sean Connery. No, Spock wasn't raised with a sister that he had to pretend he wasn't raised around. No, Data didn't have a daughter that was made out of his positronic brain part. Ugh. Um. Uh, what else can I say? There's a scene right at the beginning where they use the Next Generation 10 forward set and Picard and Data are sitting there playing a card game and it does not feel special because it does not feel like 10 forward because these people, unfortunately, everybody responsible for making the good show has either is either out of the TV business or is uh, has passed on, I'm sorry to say. And it's just kind of a... Staying with them. Acquiring love. It's a, uh... It's a... Kind of an indictment on the state of... Like, the imagination of people that... that these new writers can't even come close to what they were doing back in the, the 90s and even the 60s. So, yeah, Star Trek Picard. It's god-awful. And it's... And it's just... depressing that... we can't have, like... you have... It's just depressing that the... the mainstream... Studio system wants this kind of dour, depressing, um, modern sort of commentary and modern sort of feel to all their stuff. You have to go outside of the mainstream and go to something like the Orville to get what Star Trek used to be. We need you to locate the vessel and render any aid they may need. We're sending their last coordinates to you now. Starfleet out. Reminds me of, uh, Delta Assault Gaming says, Ugh, reminds me of how they brought back the TNG set in the Enterprise finale and it sucked. Yeah, um, it's, it's actually worse. It's actually worse here. Calculating travel vector. So, so that sucks. Uh, no Marina Sirtis or Jonathan Frakes or um, Jerry Ryan in the first episode. Yes, Moving to new coordinates. What's worse, Star Trek Discovery or Picard? Picard, because Star Trek Discovery, this is what I'm saying, I liked or I appreciated a lot of stuff in Star Trek Discovery. It wasn't a good show, it had a lot of problems, but uh, I appreciated a lot of the interaction between the characters, and I appreciated a lot of what they were doing in the show. For example, when um, at the end of season two, when all of those signals were set up by Michael herself, because she had been there and seen this happen over and over again, and the kind of mystery behind that, I thought that was very sci-fi and very imaginative, and when she realized that, she got this big smile on her face, and there was uh, there was this 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 uplift of mood. Um, the 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 more dour stuff that's in that show, and the stuff that's maybe not usually in Star Trek that's in that show, is okay because it's a reimagining. It's somebody's using a brand new canvas with the Star Trek colors, uh, if you will. This is worse because you're taking something that was pre-established that was much, much better than this and reducing it to the kind of BS that's that's going on today. 
Uh, impulse. Prepare impulse. New coordinates laid in. Okay, where are we going here? Flooding oh. course. Oops. Aye, aye, Captain. Allocating engine power for impulse. Making ready for impulse. Uh, Mel says, I only saw season one of Discovery. Oh, sorry, I spoiled... I spoiled season two for you. I'm very sorry. Uh, I saw half of Star Trek Discovery season one and had to turn it off. Just didn't feel like Star Trek. Yeah, it, to me, it felt... Like, well, again, that's the best way that I can describe it. It felt like a, a reimagining of Star Trek with the um, talking... Sort of looking and feeling like modern stuff, but with the Star Trek set to the Star Trek music, but it was doing its own thing. And if its own, let me say, if, if its own thing didn't work for you, that's totally fine. Um, this isn't, now these people are doing their own thing with something that was pre-established and you, th that you know what the quality of that was when it was out and them trying to, um, to quote Captain Picard himself, it's the work of small people trying to fill a role too big for them. Uh. I understood. There we go. So, uh, boy, I don't even know what else to say. Like, I, I summed up what happened in the episode in two minutes, and it goes on for an hour. And it's it's also deeply boring. It's just Picard ambling around, droning on and on and on about data and about this, and just that he's just... Gravitic mine. Oh, okay. Understood. Shield raised. The environment is inhibiting the effectiveness of our sensors, Captain. We are, however, detecting pockets of plasma coolant. They may provide clues as to the Nicholson's whereabouts. Hmm. Follow the plasma coolant trail. Okay. Oops. Setting you heading. Shields lowered. Torpedoes disarmed. Scan plasma coolant. Okay. Uh, by the way, really enjoyed your videos when you were confused, Matthew. Thanks for the great content. Ah, I see. Yes, uh, my brother is here. I am the other one. I am the stand-in stan. My brother, Daniel Warren, is in the room, and I'm very sure that he thanks you. Um, have you seen The Expanse? Um, I've. That sounds familiar. What is that? Scan plasma coolant, okay. Ah. I I locking new target. Scanning. So, boy. I think uh I think that's about all I have to say. This is gonna be a twenty minute video. Star Trek Picard is awful. And they these new people should stick to their alternate universe reimaginings and don't try to touch this because uh, they ain't got what it takes. It's a sci-fi show that I'm able to access on Amazon Prime. Not sure if it's on the sci-fi channel, but it's worth checking out. I'll check it out. Uh-oh. But it is not a Federation frequency. It looks like a civilian vessel needs assistance as well. Roger that. Raising shields. Arming torpedoes. Picking up a signal on emergency frequencies. On screen. 
Aegis, according to my engineer, our engines are locked in some sort of malfunction cycle. If we could temporarily override them, I think we can fix the problem. Okay. Arriving at our destination. Locking on target. It's very much a Game of Thrones in space. Oh, interesting. Uh. All right, guys. I think I'm going to call that a f first thoughts. And leave it at that, and I'm going to get going. Uh, so, yeah. Star Trek Picard. Very, very bad show. All right. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I will see you next time. I'll probably do a little video about this for every episode. That's why I put episode one in the title. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.